Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Bless and saints. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today. Uh, i tell you what, we're continuing looking at the account in John 9 where Jesus healed a blind man. And uh, if, if you haven't heard the previous episodes, go back and check them out and check the last four or five episodes out. And at where we were last time we were together, we saw that the Pharisees just finally declared to this guy, you know what, you were born in utter sin and you would teach us. In other words, how dare you think that you can instruct us, that you could show us anything. And they cast him out. They cast him out of the synagogue. And, folks, that was a a tough, tough thing in the life of a Jewish person. Well, verse 35 of John 9, we continue the account. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Jesus heard what had happened. And having found him, he, this is Jesus, said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? So Jesus heard what had happened to this guy. And there's a very vivid uh, uh, imagery right here that we're going to see in light of what we're about to go into the ninth chapter, um, tenth chapter. Here, the shepherds of Israel had cast out one of the sheep. Chapter ten of John is the great uh, chapter about the great shepherd and the sheep, and uh, they cast him out. But Jesus, modeling the great shepherd, goes and seeks him out, and he asked him, "Do you believe in the Son of Man?" Verse thirty-six. He answered, and he said. Uh, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? See, this guy wanted to believe. He wanted to know what Jesus was saying. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And so it isn't the idea that he had seen him before, but he sees him now. Uh, And The New American Standard says you've both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. In other words, the one that you see right now that he can see, remember Jesus healed this guy from blindness. He said, I am the one. I'm the one. Well, at this point in time, the man had a decision to make. When Jesus asked him that question, his response had been, well, sir, who is he that I may believe in him? This man wanted to believe. He wanted to know who it was that had transformed him. Here's the response of the man, verse 38. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him which means he would have bowed down before Jesus and worshiped him. Then Jesus <clears throat> said this very uh, profound statement right here. Of course, all the statements that Jesus profound, right? <laughs> uh, Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. <clears throat> now, remember, Jesus had already been confronted and questioned before about whether he came to judge the world. And he told him, said, no, no, I haven't come to judge the world. No, I came that the world might be saved, that the world might believe in me, okay, that I'm the bread of life, that I am the living uh, river of living water, all the pictures and imagery that he presented of himself. But now he says, for judgment I came into this world. Is is there a conflict here? No, no, no. What he's saying is there's going to be a time when he's going to be the great judge, but that's when he comes again, okay? That's yet to come. What's happening here is, He's saying that there's going to be lines of demarcation and judgment drawn here. The ones who do not see will see. This man had not seen. I mean, he visually could not see. He said, but now he's going to see because Jesus had touched him and healed him. But those who see may become blind. And you think, well, who's that? Well, the next two verses are about to define that. But he's actually speaking of the religious rulers. He's speaking of the Pharisees. He's speaking of these religionists who knew the Scripture, particularly the Pharisees, who knew the Scripture backwards and forwards, as we would say, and yet even in knowing it, refused to believe. When they refused to believe, they became self-blinded. Verse 40, some of the Pharisees near him (coughs) excuse me, heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Verse 41, and Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Well, what does that mean? Let me read it again. If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. What Jesus is building upon what happened in this man's life, the blind man, 
And what he just said about the ones who are blind would be able to see, and the ones who would see would become blind. He's saying this to them. Since you still insist that you see and that you insist that you understand, okay, and that you insist on not believing in me and believing that I am who I say that I am, then your guilt remains because you're blind, okay? You're blind because of that. Now, if you were blind to that, okay, in other words, if you were, uh, if you didn't know and then you heard the truth and you believed, you would have no guilt. But they refuse to believe. And because of that, he says, your guilt remains. Now, that's Jesus speaking. That's the last verse of the ninth chapter. Listen to the first verse of the tenth chapter. And remember, in the, uh, in the Scripture, there's no uh, original chapter division or versification. That's just been inserted by man to our benefit. And it's helpful you know, to get around. But don't think that that is uh, divine and of God. The next thing that Jesus says, the conversation just continues. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. So Jesus starts talking to them and starts explaining to them about some things using a picture of sheep, which they would have been very, very familiar with, uh, and uh, showing them that the thief and the robber, which is really the religionists, the religious rulers, were not the great shepherd, but that he, the Lord Jesus Christ, was the great shepherd. But I tell you what, we'll stop here for today, and we'll get into that the next time. In the meantime, I'm Dale, and I thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you later.